Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson. And I'm Susan Elliott. On today's episode of the Life and Money Show, we are talking with a special guest. His name is Dustin Heiner. He's been on this show not once, not twice, but this is his third time now. We've been friends for many years, and Dustin is a very successful real estate investor. He has now not just four kids like the last time he was on the show, but he has five kids now, and he has a successful coaching program, and now he's created multiple events to bring together real estate investors. And I loved this because I I wasn't on the first two interviews with him, but getting to hear his story again, it's like these layers of his onion are unfolding as we've gotten to know Dustin a lot more. I got to meet him for the first time at RubeCon this past year and and really like digging in deeper as to what real estate investing has done for him in his life. So at first it gave him financial freedom. It gave him the ability to travel with his family, to show up. It gave him then the business skills to be able to run, you know, manage his portfolio, but then to help other people build their portfolios as well. It gave him that and that. And so this episode today, I want the listener to, to really pay attention to this like down the road types of things that these skills you're developing along the way can actually lead to. It's a great way to start to vision out the bigger goals in your life and how that's actually going to happen maybe even faster than you think through something like real estate investing, even if you're doing it passively, even if it's just sort of on the side for now, even if it's just to build your family's wealth, it's giving you skills that allow you to tap into and discover kind of like a deeper purpose in yourself, just like Dustin has done. Mm -hmm. And in this conversation, you're going to hear us talk a lot about service and a lot about paying it forward and a lot about how real estate is a team sport because there's so many nuances to investing in real estate, especially, you know, single family homes versus multifamily versus commercial real estate. There's just so many moving pieces. And so you definitely want to surround yourself with people who have been there and done it before and have seen success. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And plus, you get the accountability and the support when you need it so that you don't run away when things get hard. And so the community that Dustin created, RubeCon, which is Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, which we're going to talk about at length in the show, is a great community to support you. And um, we have also created a community um, specifically for people who are interested in investing passively in uh, in commercial real estate, so multifamily, hotels, et cetera. And so we call that our Good Egg Investor Club. And so f- if, you're, if you're interested or curious about investing passively in real estate, all you get all the benefits of investing without all the hassles of being a landlord, we invite you to join. Just go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest. All right. With that, let's dive into our conversation with Dustin Heiner. Dustin, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, ladies. I am so blessed. Things are going tremendously well. But then, I mean, because I invest in real estate, I have so much extra time because I don't work for somebody else. I get to come on podcasts and hang out and talk to great people like you. So it's just a blessing to be (laughs) to invest in real estate, but then also to hang out with you guys. Yeah, Thanks. fantastic. <laughs> well, Dustin, you and I met, gosh, years ago, I think five or six years ago now. And what struck me from the very first moment that we met was not that you were this big, successful real estate investor, which you are, but your warmth and your energy. And every room that you walk into, you can sense it right off the bat that you're not just you're not just putting on a front, but you genuinely care about people. And I've loved watching you over the years turn your real estate success, not in only into yours and, and uh, providing for your family, but also paying it forward and helping to establish this community through RubeCon, the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, which you created, I think, three or four years ago now. And so I know there's a lot that goes into event planning. Oh my gosh, so much. And you're taking on so much risk by putting on a new event out there. So you mentioned, you mentioned that you feel blessed because you've got, you don't have to spend a lot of time and you're, you're pretty successful with your real estate portfolio, but with events, (laughs) I know there's times when you have to put in a lot 
of time, a lot of sweat equity. So take us to a moment when maybe the event, the putting the event together, maybe wasn't exactly what you intended or it stressed you out or it turned into something that wasn't quite what you expected. Yeah. So I, I could go with the very first time we put on the event, not knowing, like literally signing with the hotel for $150,000 guaranteeing that I will pay Ooh. them if everything goes wrong. I could talk about that because um, I hadn't sold any tickets, didn't even do that. This was brand new, but I won't. This I'll tell you the one time that I was put behind the A-ball and it was uh, very, very hard on um, more of my wife. I can work literally all day, every day. That's just how I'm wired. But my wife doesn't really like it when I do that and my family too. So it was in 2023, so we started in 2022. So I had our first event in 20, uh, 2022 in Phoenix, and it went well. A lot of struggles, a lot of growing, learning, not growing, but like learning pains, how to how to do it. But then the second year, I was, I'm going to blame myself, but I had an employee who I said, I need you to reach out to sponsors. Now, sponsors, you don't make your money from ticket sales. In fact, you lose money from ticket sales because hotels are very, very expensive. I spent $17,000 on coffee for one year. It just, that's like liquid gold. It's absolutely crazy. But I, I told Such my- Such essential gold though. Such essential <laughs> gold for those <laughs> sure events. Is. Uh, so I told my, um, uh, one of my employees, I said, I want you to reach out to sponsors because we got to start selling. And this was like July of 2022 for 2023. And she contacted maybe two or three and said, a couple of them were saying that they, you know, we need to reach out in like beginning of the year. I'm like, okay, I'm trusting her. Fast forward, I, that was the end of their cycle. Like, not cycle, how would I say? They've already got their budget, their plan. They've already mapped out all the events by January. So I'm starting to call up sponsors thinking, okay, this is a great time to start calling sponsors because if I don't get sponsors, I'm going to lose my shirt on this event. Mm -hmm. So in January, I start calling them. And then quickly, after like two or three calls, I realize, uh oh. I am not going to get any sponsors. They don't have any money. So I worked my tail off just to, well, on top of putting on the event, trying to, you know, get from signage to we print up books that people use like as workbooks and all these other things that we got to do and 50 sponsor or speakers. I literally got, I want to say 25 to 28 sponsors worked mm -hmm. so hard. I'm not, I'm decent at sales, but that many that fast, it, it put me so far behind the eight ball that by the time RubeCon was done in March, I literally the entire next month, I said, I'm done. I don't want to do anything, not just sales, but like <laughs> everything. I'm, I, <laughs> I need to just veg for the entire time because I would wake up and only think about sponsors. I would go to bed thinking about sponsors. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about sponsors all day, thinking about sponsors. Fast forward, I've learned my lesson. And here's a great thing, the big lesson that I learned. And Annie, I know like I'm looking at you, everything that you have done and built at your company. It's like all the people that you bring in that help you in your business. Same thing with real estate investing. The more people that you get around you, that's why I love creating communities, building RubeCon and, and having all these people connect. The more people that are around you that can help lift the load, it makes everything so much easier. And fast forward now, at Master Passive Income, the, the coaching arm of, of what we do, and the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, my goal for 2024 was to hire or find people that I can replace myself in all these aspects of the business. I found a marketing guy who's doing an amazing job, just got a sales lady that's going to be doing sales for all the sponsorships. And she's a realtor. She, which a realtor, you know, they're pretty good at sales. And she already has lots of connections. All that to say, Getting around the right people, that's why I built RubeCon, was because I saw my students needing more people to be around, more um, expert investors like you, Annie. I mean, you come, in, come and speak and rock the house every single year. And so I found that when I the, the problem is trying to do it myself. Then finding the wrong people, not having the wrong people. You want to have the right people in place. So in anything, even especially even like in my real estate investing, we just bought a uh, 355 unit apartment complex um, recently, like, like um, in May, we closed in 2024 and distressed sell, everything's great, but I didn't do most of the work. I was brought in because of my, I guess, uh, ability to raise money um, and asset manage, but there were other people, the other three other partners are really good. So all that to say, getting back to 
The problem was I got put beyond the A ball because I wasn't doing things right, but now getting the right people in place, which now lifts the load for everybody. Yeah. You're such a good, you're so good at that. You always have seemed to have such a vision. I remember the first time I believe this is your third time on this podcast, but I think the first time I was blown away by how you talked about um, building a business around real estate investing. And I, I've talked on this show many times about how I've struggled with that personally, with my personal portfolio, how I didn't do it the way that you did. And you said something about when you, uh, because you had operated other businesses before, like a convenience store. And you said, when you have a convenience store, you don't just get all the goods and throw them in the store. You got to get the shelves and the racks and the placement and the, the layout. And you got to think about that first. Then you put all the items on the shelf. And I thought it was so astute and such a wise way to go about any business, really, to set up the systems and the processes and then to um, let everything else fill, fill that. Well, and um, it's like that was yeah. another gift that you gave to yourself, too, as a real estate investor. You saw the like, we all see this like idea of freedom down the road. Uh, if if I can bring in a paycheck, if I can bring in passive income, I can I can have freedom. And some of us can't really get past that point as, as far as what would you do with that freedom or what would you what have you gained along the way to set yourself up to do these big dreams, like hosting this hundreds of people together, inspiring that and sending that back out into the world. These people that are so energized. I got to feel my first RubeCon for, for the first time this year. It was fantastic. One of the like most down to earth conferences that I've ever been to such good people. And so you built that along the way, but like you, you still are learning. And I think that you know, you wouldn't have kept going if it was such a struggle to do the sponsorships and and you didn't learn through that struggle and you didn't apply things to make it easier and less struggle down the road. And that's why you work successful in your real estate. That's why you are successful in your real estate, because you're learning these principles as you go. And I think the listener can really think about that. It, it may feel like you're having to do new things every day as you build your real estate investing portfolio. You're learning all of this and it feels like you're not getting it right, but you are because the failures along the way mean that you're able to get it right the next time and you're able to improvise, you know, improve on it every time. And your example with the, with putting on these events is the perfect example for that, I think. Yeah. I personally found that as just everything in life, I always try to and I hopefully everybody's in the same boat, but try to improve, try to get better. And also learning from their mistakes, like you were saying, Susan, um, learning from whatever mistakes come before. And just like Annie, when you talk about starting a business and having that business aspect, I learned from my mistake. The first time I started investing in real estate, I was following what the quote unquote gurus were telling me. And I'm definitely, if you, you should obviously keep listening to life and money show, you guys are going to love everything that, that these ladies are doing. Also, on a previous episode, I explained how I did all this stuff. I did everything wrong and then realized there's got to be a right way. And the idea of creating a business. Now, I'm definitely a real estate investor. That's definitely what I am. But if you boil everything down, I'm a business owner. And one of my businesses owns inventory. And that inventory is real estate. It might be candy bars. It might be, I don't know, shovels, you, 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 whatever it might be in your business you have a product or a service or something that somebody else is gonna be paying for. Mine happens to be real estate. I love real estate just like you ladies. And with the real estate, I figured out that I needed to create a business in order to make sure that it runs on its own or has experts doing it, or that I'm even making money. The last thing you wanna do is start a business where you're losing money. You wouldn't start a business, you wouldn't want to. <laughs> so what you do is you create a business. And same thing like you were saying, Susan, Every step of the way in every business that I own, I, I literally and start, I, I think I have five, maybe six businesses now that make me money, um, depending on how they're compartmentalized. Uh, but all these businesses now making me money, every single time I look at it from a standpoint of how can I systematize it? How can I get right people in the place? And how can I make sure that I'm providing a value to whoever it is that's going to be partaking in whatever I'm providing? Give you a quick example. Super awesome and blessed. So we have the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. We have the Real Estate Wealth Builders Multifamily Conference where we're putting on uh, strictly about multifamily and commercial real estate investing. That's in November of 2024. It's going to be annual conference just at RubeCon. But with that, I've got amazing people around me that 
uh, Charles Rose Jr. was one of my students. Again, so successful. Now he's oh, a coach here him. at Master Passive Income. I love him. Helps out at RubeCon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just horrific. He said, Dustin, I was a RIA, you know, RIA, real estate investor meetup. Uh, you know, I was a RIA vice president for three or four years. In fact, he was, I was coaching him during that time. And he said, you know what? I, I didn't want to do that anymore. So I stopped, but now I want to get back into it. I wanted to create a real estate investor meetup for RubeCon. So fast forward, we created Rube Club. So Real Estate Wealth Builders Club. <laughs> Love it. And the first one's going to be in Charlotte. They're starting in September is when they're going to start it. And it's going to be a, a monthly one. But here's what I'm thinking is now grabbing awesome people, bringing us all together so we can do awesome things to help more people. So if you have a business, it could be real estate, it could be a podcast, it, you name whatever business. If you're providing a good service and you're making sure that you're making money in passive income, or passive income, which is making money every single month, that is how you're going to be able to make sure that you're providing for your family and you're providing something that somebody else will pay you for. One quick last thing. I coach people how to invest in real estate. And everybody knows that I literally own real estate, that that's where I make my money. When people pay me to jump on a call and coach them, I kid you not, I have so many people saying thank you for your time to coach me. And what's just like you ladies, like, it's so amazing. Like to me, I'm thinking, well, you're paying me. But they're saying they're they're in their mind. They're like, you don't have to do this. Like you're like you can just be hanging out with your family and do this. Like so that it's 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 a win 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 for everybody. They're getting what they want. Hopefully, they're going to become financially independent. You know, they're investing in real estate, connecting with other people. I get what I want by be being a person that connects people. I love doing that. And so yeah, it's a huge win as long as they have business as well as learning from my mistakes, like you said, Susan. So hundred percent on board with you guys on that. Hmm. I can kind of hear the listener asking a question. I'm going to channel it through that, you know, if the listener is a, let's say a single family rental investor, right? They've got maybe some single family homes, maybe a couple of small multifamilies. And they're thinking, wow, look at this guy. He started with single family rentals. He built up a great portfolio there. And now he's moved into multifamily, 355 unit multifamily. That's huge. So tell us, how did for, how did you get interested? How did that come on your radar? Why move into multifamily? And how has your involvement with creating and fostering this community played a part in that transition? Honestly, I, I think it, came around from being around you plenty, Annie, seeing everything that you're doing. I mean, I'd be completely honest. I'm like, wow, look at everything that they're doing. You know, what's great when you have awesome people, like, you know, you rub off on each other. And so I was like, man, I got to start trying to do more on my end with multifamily. Be but, like Annie. Honest, <laughs> That's right. Came... Everybody wants to be like me. <laughs> That's, That's, why exactly. I, That's why I'm here. Yeah. I learned so much from Annie, from the people around you. I mean, you look up and if you don't have people to look up to, it's hard to know what's coming next, what you, what's your, well, what you are capable of too. And what's possible. Like I wouldn't even have known yeah. that this is possible unless I saw somebody else doing it. And for me, it started when I was playing Monopoly as a kid. You know, I just, okay, this is the life lesson. You start with land, you build houses, collect rent, and then you go up to hot hotels and you just keep getting there. And I was, it was fun. The first syndication I actually invested in was with you, with you, Annie, in the hotels <laughs> and right really hotel. excited about those. Those are great. So <laughs> I got to play Monopoly in real life. And then on top of that, it was being around the right people. So Annie, you connected me because of RubeCon 2022, the very first one. I said, who else would you know that would be a great fit? Because you know the type of people we want to be around, genuine giving people. You said, well, I have a friend. Her, <laughs> her name's um, uh, Peely, Peely Rusi. I want that she'd be, her and her husband be great to come speak. Fast forward, now they spoke three times. They're good friends. I'm actually moving to Tennessee. I'm literally five minutes drive away from them, mm -hmm. our new house we're moving to. Um, terrific people. And um, one day, Peely called me up out of the blue and said, Hey, we have a deal and we want you to become a general partner. I'm like, yes. I, she didn't even tell me like what the deal was. I'm like, yes. I because I really I want to play Monopoly. I want to keep going that direction. Mm -hmm. With that, they they showed me the deal. It, we were buying at 60 cents on the dollar. The seller was distressed. We got great, you know, seven year, 5.8% financing, um, cash flowing right away. Anyways, great, great property. I said, this is a huge win, win, win for everybody. But it was because of connection and because of trying to help each other, obviously from you, Annie, pointing me to to um, uh, Jason and Peely, to the the conference helping each other out. And 
also I raised first time ever trying to raise money because usually it's all the deals about myself. First time ever, I raised $1.5 million and I just put out a few podcast episodes, sent some emails to my newsletter, my students and stuff. And I had all these people want to invest. And it was like, wow, It, it seemed like it would be harder than it was, but it worked out really, really well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, that is so incredible. I'm so happy for you. I just want to, to just set the context for the listener, because the first time that, um, Julie and I tried to raise money, it was also for a really great deal, cash flowing, distressed. Um, we thought we could raise a million. We thought easily the two of us together should be able to raise a million. And this was back in 20, I think 2018, when the the real estate market was pretty hot and it was continuing to grow. And we scraped the bottom of the barrel. We did everything that we could. We made calls, we did emails, we did everything we could reach out to our whole network. Um, we came up, we raised less than half that. I think our total raise, including money from my mom, was around $400,000. So the fact that you went out with your first multifamily deal and blew it out of the water with 1.5 million just speaks to not only that energy and that warmth you bring, but this community that you've created and the trust that you've built with others. So that's amazing. Thank you. It was Honestly, it was it was so much fun because I'm a extrovert. I love being around people. I love talking to people. And so, so give you an example. I would put out on the podcast, hey, if you want to invest with me, you know, there's a link in the description. Click on that link. It'll give me your information, and then I'll be able to reach out to you. It was fun talking to the you know, people that listen to the podcast or you know are part of the RubeCon community. And getting to know them, where they are, see what their risk tolerances are, what their goals are, and then helping. And so being an extrovert, it it putting on events is definitely a, a good thing for, for me as an extrovert. It, it fills my need, you know, because when you're a podcaster, when you're at home most of the time, you don't have a, you don't have to go to the job. You don't have to be there and talk to people all day. And then you get home, you're like, oh, I'm so tired. I want to talk to anybody. I'm like kept cooped up here. I'm like, I got to go talk to people. So now I got to put on more events to talk to more people. There you go. Always growing. It. Always growing. Yep. Well, talk to us a little bit about multifamily. I know you, you're dipping your toes into this space and you're probably getting more and more involved in the multifamily space and you're putting together this event. But you know, what do you, from your perspective, from your vantage point, is now a good time to invest in multifamily? What's going on in the multifamily space? What's your perspective and take on it? I think every single time anybody thinks of that thought, is right now the good time? I would say 100% yes. If in five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, every single time you have that thought, yes, it's a good time. And the reason why is because it's not the time, it's the deal. Every single deal is gonna be different. You're gonna find deals, like, let's say it's single family home. You might have somebody that got a divorce that they're like, I just don't want my wife to get a penny. So I'm just giving this away. You never know, it happens. Trust me, it does happen. And then there are great deals, but there are also very bad deals that, you probably should not go after. And so there are going to be At times. At any time. In, yeah. <laughs> Those uh, that, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. In, in great times when the market's fantastic, where it's the best time to be buying, you're going to have bad deals that you don't buy. And so right now it's just a little harder to find those deals. But if you're an investor, if you've been doing it where people know you as an investor, where you're helpful, where people say, you know what, I would like to work with that person. You're going to get deals coming to you and it's going to be easier rather than like in 2010. Oh my goodness. If I had as much money as I had now, I would be so much more wealthy because back then I didn't have much money. I was just really breaking into it. Uh, started in 2006 and just, you know, grew a little more over time, but there were so many deals. Like you could just trip and fall and great, found a great deal. Now it's much, much harder, but deals come like this apartment complex that we just bought. Um, it came because the partners, the general partners that I'm with, they're so well known as terrific real estate investors that can close on deals quickly, that can raise money. So the distressed seller went to a realtor. Realtor said, I, we know somebody, reached out to my partners and deal's done. So anytime there's gonna be great deals. Now I will say, like you said, Annie, there's always gonna be bad deals. Now I personally, when I look for multifamily, I look for a couple cr- key criteria. Number one, the debt has to be good. No, here's here's a big thing. I'm not a syndicator. Like I'm not somebody that just go, you know syndicates and, and raises money. I'm an investor that happens to have some good deals and eventually I'll bring it out to my audience. 
And so what I, I'm only going to invest my money in deals that I think, you know, this is a good deal. And then I would only bring it out to other people if I think it's a great deal. I know most syndicators do that same thing too. So for me, I want to make sure it's a distressed asset. So I, you know, I buy it for less. And this, honestly, it's not just multifamily. It's even single family homes. When I'm buying a home, I don't pay top dollar. I don't pay above asking price. Those are homeowners. They, people that want to waste money. I'm an investor. So I want to make sure I capture equity. So if it's a distressed seller, then great. I want to make sure I have good debt so that I'm going to be able to have a good runway to be able to exit the property if I need to, where it's cash flowing. I want to make sure I'm making money every single month, a way to have value add, like forced appreciation. Like all these things are in my mind as I'm going through any specific deal. Could be multifamily, could be a single family home. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about a little bit about, so I know you've, this is the third year that RubeCon has been in existence. And now both Susan and I have been there. We've both been on stage and it's just a phenomenal feel and a phenomenal vibe and energy that's at that conference. It's unlike any other event um, that I've, I've been to. And so I'm really curious about your vision for RubeCon multifamily and what what do you see as the the future for that event? What do you hope for this first year for the event? Um, and what are you excited about? I love that question. So let me take a quick step back to to help you to understand why I wanted to go through the more more stress of putting on a brand another event. You know, having multiple events a year. Here's the stress. So I really I unveiled this in RubeCon 2022, the very first year. So being financially independent, it's a blessing to be able to have luxury to have more time and be able to do go things on your passion or go towards your passion. And as I've coached more and more students, I think, I don't know, thousands of students now, how to invest in real estate, I've realized that whenever I buy a property, it's an accomplishment. I feel great. When I quit my job, it's an accomplishment. But I always felt like I needed another accomplishment. When I helped my first student to buy their first property, I felt fulfilled. I felt like I, in life, I'm feeling fulfilled in life because I'm helping another human being get exactly what they want. It's not an accomplishment. I feel fulfilled. And so every single time I'm like striving for that fulfillment uh, feeling. And over time, doing this so many times with my students, I'm like, how can I exemplify or uh, uh, exacerbate, like make that bigger? And then created RubeCon because I wanted to reach more people. And then at RubeCon, I realized I needed to create a goal for myself to help me to get out of bed. Cause I could just, you know, create one event and just keep doing the same thing. Everybody, we could just buy that one property and just live on that one. No, I believe is we need to continue to grow. So at RubeCon 2022, I unveiled that my goal or mission in life now is to help 1 million people to invest in real estate and hopefully become financially independent. So pausing that, just before that, I created a goal a year or two before where I said, I want to make a million dollars in all of my businesses, just a quantitative number. So I knew I was at reaching the goal, but that's the worst goal I've ever created. I was, I'm not driven by money and I didn't even want to, I was like, I don't even want to do this. Like, this is so boring. When I changed it to helping 1 million people to invest in real estate, now that gets me out of bed to create another event like the multifamily wealth builders um, uh, event. So the reason why we started this one was because RubeCon is many things. It's um, uh, educational, but also encouraging. We talk about goal setting. Like Annie, you came on stage and you rocked the house and started dancing. I was like, oh my goodness, she's <laughs> dancing on stage. Get in and get, get up and dancing and having a great time. We break through barriers. 8 on a Saturday. You got to <laughs> do what you can. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody was yeah. dancing uh, in that room at that moment. That I good. loved it. I recorded everybody it. Everybody too. Yeah, you know, it was it was it was perfect. I was like, this is so Annie. I love it. I had to record it. I, was, I had to put it on social media. It was perfect. So at RubeCon, it's it's ev everything, every asset class, and also um, like motivational. Like think of like Tony Robbins. Like we want that. We want you to know that you can do it. That's and get you around the right people. Well, with the multifamily with RubeCon multifamily, the vision is to be much more on the track of strategy and tactics and everything for every type of commercial real estate. And the reason why I didn't just say RubeCon commercial real estate is because it just, it was a little longer. Multifamily for me, it gets us down the path of thinking commercial. So it could be storage facilities, mobile home parks, you know, you name it, everything commercial. And this is going to be so much more tactical. 
Like, how are you going to invest? How are you going to find the deals? How are you going to asset manage? All, all, everything that comes with commercial real estate, as well as passive investing. How do you find the right passive investments to do? Um, node investing, things like that that are outside of the asset class of, or every asset class. Basically, I wanted a brand new event that's going to center around commercial real estate investing. So my vision for this is to create so many more multifamily or commercial real estate investors that are going to be partnering together. Now, I, as you know, you ladies know, uh, multifamily or commercial real estate, it's a lot harder. You need a lot more people. When I say harder. It's not the right way to say it. You just need more people. There's more hands in order to get things done because there's more moving parts. Single family home, very, very simple. Hire a property manager. You got it done. All set. But you need everything from you know asset management to uh, underwriting to raising capital. I mean, you get uh, your audience is really smart, so you know everything. But there's so many people that you need to be a part of and connect with, and there's also great experts that are going to show you how to do these things that have done it before. And so that's the thing that I believe we need to get around the right people that experts have done before, but also the right people that are we could potentially partner with or connect with. And one quick last thing is I've also realized every single relationship that I ever come in contact with, I look at it as a long game. Meaning if you meet somebody, just for everybody listening, if you meet somebody right then and there and you start thinking, what can I get out of this person right here and right there, then you're going to lose. Honestly, like every single time you're going to lose. If you look at how can I benefit this person now, and then eventually something might pay off in the future, then that's absolutely, if we focus on serving first, then it's going to come pay back. And honestly, looking at everything that I have now from the two different events, the, all the coaching, we now have a, a podcast network of six different podcasts talking about real estate. Um, I, I, everything that we're doing is because I first thought, how can I serve this person that I first come in contact with? And then in, eventually they say, my goodness, Dustin, you've served me so much. I, I, want, I need to do something for you. That's like, it's not that I want to. It's like, I can't not do this. What can I do to help you? And that's how I've seen from my uh, walk of you know coaching and, and all that stuff is the more people that I serve, the better my life gets and the better their lives get. Mm -hmm. 100%. And that's something that student, Susan and I ascribe to as well. And we're big on that here at Good Egg. It's about the goodwill that you're putting out in the world. It's not about what you're getting back. Eventually, that'll take care of itself. But it's really about how can I serve you? How can I bring um, that level of service to you and what your goals are? Um, but I love that you call your call your your thought behind calling it Rubecon multifamily versus Rubecon commercial. First of its first it's got a better ring. And second, multifamily, as we've found, is often the gateway for people to get into uh, to get into those other commercial real estate classes because who hasn't lived in an apartment building, right? It's very easy to understand. It's very very simple, very close to single family rentals. So you kind of can understand the model and get into it. And then once you do, once you invest in that first multifamily syndication, then you're like, okay, I understand how a syndication works. Now let me look at mobile home parks. Now let me look at self-storage. Let me look at hotels and industrial. And then that's how you really get that diversification. So I think that's a great strategy to start with multifamily and to really niche it down and as you mentioned, that it's such a the commercial real estate is such a team sport. I definitely fell into that at the beginning, thinking I could do everything on my own. And I definitely could not <laughs> learn that very quickly. And the partners are so, so essential to finding the right partners to complement your skill sets, but that you get along with and that you trust and they trust you because it's it's going to be a long-term partnership. It's not a, you know, one month, two month kind of a, a project. These projects are, you know, five, seven, 10 years long. And so you really got to, you've really got to get to know people. So. And I would suggest okay. that the listener think about attending one of these events. And even if you think that you don't know what you would be bringing to that team, what what role you would be serving in that group that's going to make the deal happen. Because if that's going to help you switch to that serving mentality too. And as you were describing that, how you switched from sort of like, what can I gain to what can I provide? What can I, what value can I give? We talk about that a lot, but sometimes I think unless you've had like the, the like neural dopamine hit of how much happiness you actually get from serving. It's hard to believe in it. 
it's it's hard to say like, but no, I need to serve my needs first and then I can give. But sometimes, I mean, take, just go to one of these conferences with the main goal or do anything, go to one meeting, go to one thing with one main goal of just saying like, how can I help someone at this meeting? I mean, maybe it's just like, here's how I manage my time. I mean, everyone does something really well and those skills can transfer into real estate investing more than you probably understand. So going to one of these events and with the goal of just seeing how you can serve would be a great way to see how you can fit into these teams that put these things together, that put these big investments together. And you had a, a really good point that I didn't realize that, the, I guess the dopamine hit, like you said, like the service and how much more like I feel like so much. I feel like on a high when 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 I serve people and then the after benefits of it, too, is eventually it comes back to pay me 10 times over what I helped this one person to get. And so. It wasn't until I started really serving people and started figuring out how can I serve people more that I found that this is literally the only way that I want to make money anymore. Like, I don't want to try to make money on any other way other than serving people. And it, I kind of equated to this. And I this was part of my talk at RubeCon this last year was the more people that I serve, obviously, like I said earlier, the more money I make, but the more money may, they make, they get what they want. I get what I want. But when I first started thinking, I need to serve people. Yeah, I get it. It's kind of like if you have a sibling and your sibling starts having kids and you know, they have a, a kid and you have like, let's say a nephew and you go over there and say, oh, I love your, your, your son, just like he's mine. And like I said this to my, my brother one time, I said, oh, I love your son. I love him just like he's mine. He's like, no, you don't. Like, what do you mean? Of course I do. This is my nephew, of course. He says, no, you don't love him like I do because you don't understand. You don't have the capacity to understand what it is like to love him like your own. Then when I had my first child, I was like, now oh, I get it. Right. Oh, exactly. Then same yeah. thing with service and helping other people and serving other people that as soon as I, I was like, oh my goodness, I need to do only this from now on. Whereas when you're trying to get to financial freedom, don't get me wrong. Everybody, if you're not at financial freedom yet, it's a lot of work. You have to, it takes the longest and it's a lot of work. And you kind of get a perspective that I should be serving people. But once you get to financial freedom, then it's like, wow, the, the doors open because all of a sudden you start the capacity or the understanding of what it actually is opens up in your brain. Now, like I said, I literally only focus on serving people. And I'd be completely honest, I make so much more money when I do that. Mm -hmm. It's no surprise. I mean, the more was that, was it a, oh, I'm going to butcher this, the Jim Rohn quote, the more you, you'll you get everything you want in life. If you just help enough other people get what they want. It was Jim Rohn, right? Oh, I'm so not good at this. It's a anyway. very good quote, but yes, if you're right. I'm, I'm with yes. you on that very right down the line. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Well, um, I'm sure that the listener is probably chomping at the bit to get into this conference, either your RubeCon, the original conference or RubeCon multifamily, which is coming up within the next month or so. And so uh, we're definitely going to ask you for all the details there. So to the listener, stay tuned. But first, we're going to uh, move into the final part of our show. And you've been through this before, the Life and Money Show Spotlight Round. We're we're going to ask you three questions we ask all our guests. Dustin, you ready? Yes, do it. It's always fun to do it multiple with guests mm -hmm. who come you on multiple go times. You're, yeah, yeah, your answers it's are It's like asking the why multiple times, but really why? Why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you say that? So the first question is about your life and money. So Dustin, tell us one thing that you're doing to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. Wow, so the what I'm doing now is I'm creating an ecosystem business where everything connects to each other. My hub, think of like a wheel on a car. The hub connects to the axle, helps the car to go, is real estate. Everything regarding real estate. And now, remember, I've talked about serving. How many more people can I serve? Well, every, a hub, hub has spokes that goes out to the rest of the wheel that is now, think of that as every spoke connects to the hub and every spoke connects to each other through the hub. So we'll have the RubeCon, the conferences, we have a mastermind where, you know, smaller, much more intimate uh, events. We have um, the, the coaching, uh, we're creating software. We have a podcast network. Like think of all these different things. We're doing the monthly meetups. 
all these different things are all a part of the wheel, but they all touch the hub, which is real estate, which everybody, let's say they find me through or everything we're doing through one of the, the monthly meetups that we do. Rube Club, it's going to be in Charlotte is when, where it's going to be at um, the first one. But they find that, then they could find either coaching or they can find RubeCon or the multifamily event or whatever it might be. So what I'm doing now is let me figure out a even more efficient and better way to reach more people and help more people. And, but here's the great thing. All these other businesses that I'm creating, I have other people that I'm elevating them, like I'm building them up as this is the expert. This is the person that you should be working with. So I'm winning by helping them be elevated so that they get better investing. But then also, they're also connecting to, let's say, people that come to the event so they can meet more people. And then, so everything for me, I'm trying to get everything connected as possible to serve more people, to connect everybody together. Amazing. Yeah, that's, yeah. And you're so good at that, that just, the holistic view of everything and bringing people together to do amazing things. Um, and it elevates everybody, like you said. All right. Second question is about others, life and money. And so share with us one thing that um, that has really helped you on your path. It could be a book, a, a tip, a resource, anything that has really helped you that you think might help others as well. Well, I would say... I can't remember the third question, but if it, the question, third question is on a book, I'm going to give the one uh, right now is um, honestly be completely straightforward and say the Bible has helped me so much more so in my life, because as I read the Bible, if you take anything from it, Jesus Christ, he literally served. He said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And then as I read the Bible, believing in it, I'm thinking I need to do what I see Jesus doing. And in implementing that in my life, I've seen how in service to other people, just like the whole episode has been all about service. And it's easy to just disregard the message of like, like I hear, okay, I listen to that episode. It's about serving. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm going to move on to serving. I'm from serving or do something else being straightforward and say, the reason why I only serve now is because I get so much more benefit. In fact, I, when I read the Bible, I know the Bible is something that's going to help me in all walks of my life. So why would it not help me also in business or, you know, making money or whatever it might be? And so applying that. So for me, the biggest thing that I've, that helps me, if I were to suggest to anybody, I think the last time on the show, I talked about either passive income or continue or something. I, I remember something different, but now being on here the third time, it's literally all about serving. I mean, really. And it's, it, like I said, it's easy kind of just, put it check. I need to serve people, move on. It's hard for me to really drive it home that this is literally the only way that I make money anymore. Only thing I want to do in any business because I make other people's lives better and I make my life better from it too. Mm, so good. And a quick fact check moment for the for the listener. I did look it up and I did get it wrong. It was not a Jim Rohn quote. It was a Zig Ziglar quote. And it is, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. And Dustin, that's exactly, you're like the walking is exemplification of that. That's all that you do live and breathe. And so it's no wonder that you are creating such a beautiful life by design for yourself and your family, which speaking of which, our third question is typically... What are you, what's one thing you're doing to help make the world a better place? And you're doing so many things, but in particular, I want to angle this question around your family because you now have not four, but five kids, the latest one born just earlier this year. And as you're building up this real estate empire, so to speak, and you're creating this community, what do you hope um, to teach your children? What do you hope that they take away from all of this? Man, I, I, that's a fantastic question. I, a couple things. Number one, just tangibly, real estate. If you have buy and hold real estate that you can literally give to your kids, generational wealth, I will literally give these properties to my kids. I mean, you can see them in the background if you're watching this. Um, I have four kids in the picture, but we just had our fifth. Um, so generational wealth, that's 100%. But then also the knowledge of everything that I'm doing they are we also homeschool. In fact, let me take that back. My wife does the homeschooling. I have the easy job of making money. She's got the hard job of homeschooling all five kids. But with that, 
I'm also educating them on how to do all this sort of stuff. In fact, my every one of my kids, my daughter is 16 now, and before she's 17, our goal is for her to buy her first rental property. And every kid from then on, that's their goal. Before they either turn 16 or definitely 17, that they get their first rental property and me coaching them along the way. Because in the end, I would love to see them not have to work unless they want to, you know, this is something I want to do. But with all the businesses that I own too, they even come and work at my conferences. Like they do registration, they sell hats and all that sort of stuff. And so I know that I could not give my job to my kids. Nobody can. You can't give your job to the kids, but you can give your investments, your properties, your businesses, um, whatever you have that's tangibly yours, you can give your kids. So for me, what I'm passing on is knowledge, um, tangible things like real estate, but then even businesses that I own, bringing them and building them up in it. That's so beautiful. And it really is at the end of the day, that knowledge is the most valuable thing that you can give them. The, not only the knowledge, because now you can probably type it into chat, chat GPT. What are the steps to invest in real estate? But really the, the wisdom, the hard-earned wisdom that you've gained through all the trials and tribulations that you've personally gone through, not only with your real estate portfolio, but now coaching these thousands of people and paying it forward. Now you get to pass that along to your children. So they get to start many, many, many steps ahead. So what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful environment ecosystem that you're creating, um, not only for your family, but now this extended RubeCon family. And I hope, I really, really hope the listener, if you have not been to a RubeCon event, you must go. You must go. If there is one event, I will recommend it is RubeCon. Whether you are just starting out in real estate or you are in multifamily commercial real estate, this is one of the best events to attend, to build community, to meet other people, to make friends within this space. It's such a wonderful event. So now, Dustin, tell everybody, if they are interested in coming to the RubeCon multifamily event coming up in November, tell them the date and where they, they can go to get their tickets. Yeah, absolutely. And I also want to give you guys 10% off if you use a promo code GOODEGG. Just use that promo code, very, very simple, good egg. I'll give you 10% off. But if you go to rubcon.com, R-E-W-B-C-O-N.com, just abbreviated, Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference, all abbreviated. I know the link will be in the description, but use that promo code, good egg. And honestly, like Annie's a really good friend of mine. So I'm always gonna have that promotion code for every single event, at least our best I can. Every event, if it's uh, RubeCon or RubeCon Multifamily, we're even gonna be putting on new events in the future, at least that's the roadmap is gonna do. We'll have good egg because Annie's a good friend of mine. I want to promote everything that Annie does and everything that she, I mean, she's just terrific. So but anyways, I love that everybody is in here that's wanting to have a better life. Um, they want to grow. They want to um, basically get out of the rat race. And that's what we do. So go to rubcon.com. You'll have the best time. And one quick thing, I didn't share this, but a lot of real estate investor events they are hype and sales pitch from the main stage. And they say, run to the back and go give us lots of money. It's normally a million dollars, but it's $50,000 a day. I didn't, I, I can't stand those personally. So I said, I want to create an event that is the opposite or one that I would want to go to, which is just community. It's just experts helping and just everybody wanting to be together and commit, create a community. And that's where I created. So, but yes, you can go there. Plus also, if you want to listen to me, I have my own podcast, Master Passive Income, where I just, I've been doing that since 2015, I think. And it's so much fun podcasting. I mean, it's, it's just, it's terrific because you see people's lives change. But yeah, you can find me on there. Plus, oh, one last thing. You can even find me on Instagram. I've been trying to put a little effort into Instagram. So the Dustin Heiner, T-H-E, Dustin Heiner. And I'm not that arrogant to be the Dustin Heiner. It's the only handle <laughs> I can come up with. But uh, you could reach out to me. I love getting DMs on there. So you can reach out to me on there too. Amazing. Dustin Heiner, successful real estate investor, coach, mentor, creator of Master Passive Income and creator of RubeCon and all of the RubeCon variations that are going to be coming up in the future. Dustin, thank you as always for being here with us and our listener audience and sharing your infinite wisdom and your, your energy with us. Thank you, ladies. <laughs>